that was absolutely delicious. Another one of those special simple pleasures in life that comes out of a simple seed, a little mango seed. Beautiful little parcels of potential, that's what they are. Welcome back to the Weedy Garden. If you didn't see the last video, I was down the creek and I ate this mango, the first mango from my mango tree. Before we go down into the food forest again, I want to just quickly show you how I plant a mango seed. While I was down at the creek, I got some sharp sand. Where's the sharp sand? Sharp sand is this one here. That's the sand that kind of washes up on the shore after a flood or after a big rain down at the creek. And it's nice sand because it's got different sized particles. You can see how this sand has got lots of different shapes and sizes. Well, that helps the water drain a lot easier through it. If you use sand from the beach, the sand particles are all very similar size. So it compacts a bit more than the sharp sand. Sharp sand makes a good drainage. And then I'll get some compost out of my soil factory. And we all know what that smells like. A fresh forest in the morning. Oh, blah, blah, blah. I love that smell. <laughs> I love that smell. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mix a little bit in a new bucket. i just put like one, yeah, two. And three and a half. Let's see if I guessed right. Just put two little scoops of compost in there because the seed doesn't really need a lot of nutrients. The seed already has all the nutrients it needs here, just like an egg yolk. The little chicken has got all the nourishment it needs until it comes out of its shell. It's the same with the seed. It's got all the nourishment it really needs until it sticks its head out of the ground. But I like to put it just a couple of little spoons of compost in so when it does wake up, its roots can go a bit deep and start eating. I might take my hat off now that I'm not outside anymore. Okay, what we've got to do to start with, you don't have to do this, but I like to do it because it just sort of helps it. See, the little the little mango seed is like a little bean, bean a little bean, the mango, little mango seeds inside here. And then see, you can just open it up. All right, then just open up, see? Little mango. It's all protected in this little shell here. But it's like a little umbilical cord on it. See, I'll just take that off. I've got about uh, so about about half fill that up and I'll just place that little mango seed right there. Okay, and then just a little bit of soil on top like that. That's really as simple as it is. It only took a few weeks to plan and, and dig my food forest with the help of some of my friends, but it only took one day to plant all these trees. But do you know what the most important thing is? And that is that you get the fruit that you like to eat. See, I, I don't want to plant trees that I don't enjoy the fruit of, so I've planted all of my favorite fruit, like figs, I love figs, and bananas. These are beautiful and sweet, these ladyfingers. And I've decided to keep my ladyfinger trees because I don't have to risk my wife anymore to cut them down because I found a new technique. It's really simple. You want to just give it a little slice. Nice one. It's just starting to ripen down the front there. Nice and protected inside the bag. I want to have a few more mulberry trees. So actually I'll prune this here and then I can make a, another mulberry tree by just chopping this one off. Just chop that off here. And I'll chop a couple of the uh, leaves off here. Okay. And then I'll also chop half the leaf off. Like that. Probably even, could probably even take off these two as well. So we just leave it a little bit. And then I just scrape this one here like this. See, just on both sides, like that, and then I just put that in some soil. So the reason I chopped the leaves off and chopped the leaves in half is because I've taken the roots away from the tree now, so it doesn't have all this energy to put up moisture and, and um, nutrients. So I'm just gonna chop them in half so it still has a little bit of photosynthesis, which it will need. And then I just pop it into one of the pots with the same mixture, and it'll, 
it'll start to root and you'll have a, a new mulberry tree. So I've already done that three times. So I've got three more mulberry trees that are coming on. And I'll just show you what it looks like. If I open this up, I'll just have to open this up and let the dirt fall on the table. Soil. If you just look really carefully, look. Look how that little tree has made its roots already. So that's how easy it is to make a new tree. So now I've got three mulberry trees. One down there, one here soon ready to go, and this one ready to go in autumn time. I'll plant it in the ground when it cools down a bit. And it's got some roots. And I also love babaco. Babaco is almost like a fruit salad. Fruit, tastes like fruit salad, tastes like a Fanta fizzy drink. It's one of my favorites, so that's why I'm getting more of those. I've done it already here to this one. And I've also got one growing here. There, I can see the roots have developed and they're shooting new shoots. Very healthy little plants. But again, it's the same as before. You just pull off the side shoots from the babaco, pull these off. I might have to just do the cutting. Just like this one, this one, and I'd probably take this one as well. There you go, you can see that little shoot coming on there. I'd stick that down in the ground. I just give it a little rub on the side here as well. And then Bob's your uncle. So it's nice having little little trees you can give the guests when they come and visit your garden. Ready to put together with the other little plants in the nursery. Okay, let's go down to the food forest again. When I started my food forest, all I knew was I wanted some bananas, some mangoes, and some avocados. But I knew in this area, it's a subtropical area, you can grow a lot of different subtropical, exotic, tropical fruits, right? When I was planting my food forest, that took me several weeks because I had to find out what sort of trees grew well in this area. That's very important. So I went down to the nursery and I asked the nursery because the nursery, they, they are professionals. And also wanted to find out what sort of fruit that I like to eat. There's no point planting something that I didn't enjoy to eat. So, so if we just take a little tour through the garden, I'll tell you what I've got. So we're going to go for a little walk around the food forest now and I'll show you what trees I've got. A little bird's eye view of the garden, you ready? Well down here we started with the banana plant and then on the hugel culture bed I've got the avocado tree, pecan tree, a nice little mulberry and then I've got the little Thai dwarf banana and then as we walk along here we've got an avocado, a pomegranate, we've got a guava here and a peanut butter tree and a lucina which is a support species and that's next to my avocado tree and I've got a yakon, more mulberry because I love mulberry, a pear, another avocado on both sides and um, that's a support species. And that avocado, that's the Mexican tree fan. They've got the tamarillo, macadamia nut, yakon, avocado, pecan, longan, bohemia, cacharina, bananas. And then up here we've got the elderflower, another little mulberry, because I like mulberries. Another avocado next to a tipuana tipu, which is also a support tree, and another avocado. And then if we go up this way, and we walk through these swales, on the left hand side we've got the Brazilian cherry, a wampy, and ice cream beans, Mexican tree fern, and then grapes. And then I've got a popcorn cashier and babaco, more yakon, bananas, and this is where the bush turkey created some havoc on this side, so we don't have anything there. But on this side, we've got elderflowers and more popcorn cashier. I love the popcorn cashier, it smells like when you go into the movies and watch the weedy garden down the carrot hole movie with popcorn.
Oh. Hey, mate. Come on in. Hey, baby. Oh, sweetheart. Oh, my God. This is absolutely magical. Oh, honey, that looks amazing. Oh, <laughs> sweetheart. Woo! <laughs> And then we've got bananas. And then here we've got a little plum tree underneath the bananas. And then here we've got my dwarf Thai mango next to a pigeon pea and a pineapple. The bees, dragon fruit, fig tree, popcorn cassia, pigeon pea, which is supporting my Brazilian cherry. And they've got another mango, some sugar cane, some yakon, some tulsi, which is a nice herb tea, Brazilian cherry, cassava. And then my little mango tree. And over to the left we've got all the citrus orchard. There's too many different citrus fruits to talk about on this little video. And then we've got pineapple and comfrey. We've got chilies and pineapple and mulberries, arrowroot, acerola, kiwi fruit, and then bananas and my favourite here, the Panama berry. Panabar berry. That's one of my favourites. Mmm. Tastes like bubble gum. So what I've done with this is I've chopped the top off it. So it doesn't grow up high. The fruit grows out here. So I can walk around the whole tree and reach pretty much all the fruit without having to get a ladder. Can you see how I've chopped it off here? You see how it wants to grow, it wants to continue growing up, so I've got to keep these ones chopped off so it doesn't grow up. Mm. That's what I wanted, right? Okay. Another thing is, you know, in a forest, there's all sorts of things that are dying in the forest, like the birds are dying and the frogs are dying and the insects and the spiders are dying. So there's a lot of dead animals that are falling naturally in a forest. But because my forest is on the side of a hill and it's not quite established, there's not a lot of dead animals that are dying underneath my trees. So what I do is I just get a little bit of blood and bone. And I just sprinkle that around the bottom of the tree. Or if it's a pineapple, just underneath the bottom of the pineapple, on this side of the swales, on the uphill side of the swales, so the nutrients are going downhill and underneath the roots. That's like a couple of rats and a bird and half a dozen spiders right there. And I kind of just do that around the whole swales about once a year. And although I do have still two chickens left. My little chickens are not enough poop in my little two chickens to do my whole food for us. So I do use chicken pellets as well, which is just dried chicken pellets. As if, I can't imagine, try and imagine my chickens have just been going around scratching and pooing without any scratching happening. Again, on this side of the swales, on the uphill side, you know, and while I'm here, bananas, they love it as well. Makes everything happier and healthier. Any sort of poo is good for the ground. Mmm. That, that variety is so amazing. I feel like that gorilla that I used to dream I was. Not that I want to be a gorilla, but free, eating healthy food straight from the jungle. Mm. Speaking of bananas, I'm in a video where I was uh, showing you how to, how I uh, kill the banana pups to stop them from coming up all the time. And uh, in the beginning I used kerosene, and well, we all thought that wasn't very sort of organic and permaculture-like. So 
And then I found out we could use uh, just water. But the thing is, you have to keep topping the water up all the time. So, I've got another good thing I do with my bananas. See, I don't want to put any more banana pups down in my swales because I think half of my food forest already is bananas because that's what I was doing for the first six months. But basically what I've got here is a potassium factory. Because worms love banana. You just put them in Wormville because worms like banana. They like banana, they like banana peel, they like banana pups. And it's full of potassium, so that gives us a nice potassium rich worm castings. And when you say, well, what do you want to use potassium rich worm castings for? Well, if you've got your things that are fruiting or flowering, that's when they need the potassium. The worms, they like banana pups. Okay. So i tell you what, I think I'll wrap it up for this video. I say thanks for watching. And um, on the little garden tour, I think what I'll do is I'll talk about the worms on the next video. And I'll explain to you why I've got all these different fertilizer barrels down here. I've got my worm juice and my bacteria juice. But I'll show you the, the dilutions and how often I use it. And I'll have a, a nice look at the worms as well. I'm gonna go down and have lunch. So I'll see you on the next video.